I don't know about you, but one thing that really bothers me when I've spent a lot of time designing a level for a game is when a user finds a way to cut half of that level off. Today, we're going to go ahead and take a look at ways we can fix that. The main way is setting up checkpoints. So for a racing car game, he has to go through each point in order, in order to complete a lap. Let's take a look at how we do this. Now, for the simple track that we have set up here, because it's in 2D, I've got colliders around everything, so he can't go through them. But when you get into 3D racing games, uh, quite often you can jump over something, gain access to an area that you're not supposed to be in, and end up cutting off part of the track that the developer didn't intend for you to do. So checkpoints, how is this going to work? Uh, I'm just going to put something across, let's say here, and maybe we'll do one down here. And they have to go through this one before it registers here. And likewise, it'll just keep going around. And we can set up a lap counter as well. So we want to maybe go around our track three times. So we can set one up to be the, the goal or finish line. And when he's gone through that one enough times, the race itself actually ends. So let's start with, uh, well, the visuals. The first thing I want to make, actually, let's do a whole new scene. Uh, we'll start with a 2D area. Area 2D. <laughs> right here. Now, for those coming from Unity or have experience in Unity, this is a trigger. Just think of it as setting up um, a trigger that you can go through. All right, so it tells us it needs a collider. So we're going to add one. So I am going to take a collision shape 2D. I need to set a shape. The shape that I am going to set is, uh, well, for this one, I'm just going to do a box or rectangle. And then I also want some sort of visual so that the player can see it. Let's take a look at our sprites. What do we have here? I'm going to grab something singular. Let's go under PNG. Tiles, let's open this up. And I was on the dirt track, right? Nothing there, let's take the dirt road. And there's some in here that actually have images on them. If that's too small to see, you can just drag them in, take a look at them, and then just control Z to get rid of them. The one I am gonna be using is, uh, well, Road Dirt 69. <laughs> so I want to make sure uh, this is centered properly, so I'm gonna get rid of it. It does come out as a sprite up here, not quite what I want. So I'm gonna select the area 2D. I'm gonna pick my sprite this way. Now there are other ways to center the sprite the way you want it. This is just the way I'm gonna do it. Now I'll take that sprite, I'll drag it onto the texture, and now it's centered the way I want. So let's take a look at this collision shape. I'm gonna press control, scroll in, just so I can get the whole picture in. And I want my collision shape to stretch across this whole checker flag area. There we go. And to be honest, I kind of want it on top as well. So I'm going to take the sprite. I'm holding, I've got the sprite selected. I'm holding down control. And I'm going to hit the up arrow. That puts the sprite on top. With Godot, the way things are rendered is everything on the bottom is rendered first. And as you go up, those are layers in the background. So how does this work? I'm going to select the area 2D. We're going to come over to node. And these are a list of events that are already built into an area 2D. And the one I'm going to look, listen for is uh, not area shape here, body entered. Now, since our character is a rigid body, anytime he enters this collision area, it's gonna fire off an event, a trigger. We can do something with that. In this case, we're gonna deactivate this waypoint or checkpoint and activate the next one. And if this is set as, let's call it the, the goal line, uh, we'll increase the lap counter as well. But before we can do any of that, we have to have a script. And I'm gonna change the name of this to checkpoint. Now to add a script, we just make sure that we have the root selected or wherever it is that you want to add the script. I almost always add it to the root. We hit the plus. Uh, we're doing C sharp. I'm going to keep it called checkpoint. Um, I don't want it there though. For this one, I'm going to go into scenes. I'm going to make a folder, which I will call checkpoint. I'm going to put it in here. Let's create it. This will open up Visual Studio Code. There we go. We got the default. I'm going to jump back into Godot. I'm going to save this scene because I want it in the exact same folder as well. So everything to do with this checkpoint is inside that folder. If we ever go to another um, another game, we can just bring it. So we'll jump back into Visual Studio Code. And there's a couple things I want to set up here. So as usual, I don't like the default formatting, so I get rid of all of it. Not a good old thing. It's a every engine thing. All right, so first thing I want to do is I want to create a Boolean. And I want this Boolean to keep track of, is this currently active? Let's see. By default, I want to set it to false. I want to have access to this in the inspector as well. So I need to make this an export. 
The last one I'm gonna look at is if it's that finish line. Again, I need this in the inspector. And if it is the finish line, every time we go through it, we increase that lap counter. Now there are two more that we're gonna add a little bit later on. When we go through here, we have to activate the next checkpoint as we deactivate ourselves. And we're also gonna set up some global stuff. So we'll need a reference to the global, but we'll get to those when we get there. So I'm gonna save this off. We'll jump back inside of Unity. I'm gonna hit the build button. Deselect the checkpoint, select back on, come over to the inspector, and we should see the two Booleans we've exposed. Great. Jump back into Node, and I'm gonna double click the body entered. Uh, we gotta pick what script it's going on. Right now we only have one in our scene, so, well, I'm gonna select that one. We can change the name. We could use uh, traditional C-sharp naming. I tend to stick to the on checkpoint body entered, at least for now, because when I see that in my code, um, it really brings out what it is. And I always spell it wrong, so I forgot to copy and paste it. So what I'm gonna do is come back in. I'm gonna select it, right click, hit uh, disconnect. Double click to connect, <laughs> double click to connect again. I'm gonna copy the name, then hit connect. Now I can just come in here, does not return anything. That's the event we want. And I do know that this takes one parameter, the body that comes through. So to start off with, I don't even care what goes through us. All I wanna do is just be able to toggle ourselves on and off just to make sure I get everything set up right. So we're just gonna to check to see if we're currently active. And if we are, we're gonna set ourselves to be, well, not active. Or in this case, we'll just set up, set up a toggle where every time we go through, we activate and deactivate ourselves. And just so we know stuff is happening, let's do a GD print and we're gonna go and print out the is active value as well. Save it off, jump in and let's try it out. So to get this to work, make sure you save it. You'll know it's saved because you don't have the asterisks up here. I'm gonna come into track one, I'm gonna hit the little chain link. This means we're gonna include a, a scene that we've already made. In this case, I'm gonna grab checkpoints, double click it, it brings it in. Here it is right here. I'm just gonna grab the first tool. Uh, let's move it over here. I do need to rotate it, that's fine. I can come in here under transform, uh, rotation degrees. It doesn't really matter which way it faces. So 90 degrees, negative 90, it'll work. And then I wanna stretch it down to cover all of this. So I'm gonna come down to scale and on Y, oops, I forgot because I rotated it, it's no longer Y, it's X and to be fair, that was slow. So I'm gonna grab it this way, maybe around that size. You wanna make sure he can't get by without hitting it. Now, if I had a better texture that I could tile or scale better, it would look, well, better. <laughs> I'm not worried about that though. I'm gonna move down just a little bit here. And I think Y is fine. So I'm gonna leave it like that. And I'm gonna make it active to start with. And let's try it out. When we drive through, it should toggle itself to not being active and we should get some output. So let's build and run. So we go ahead, we run. And there we go. We got the faults. And if we take a look here, we'll open up the track, go to the checkpoint and is active is turned off. Great. Now, one thing I wanna do here is play around with the zoom of the camera. Notice when we play, I wanna be able to see a lot more of the track. This is something I meant to add at the end of the last one. Uh, I just wanna be able to see more. And we can do that by going into our car and selecting the camera and playing around with the zoom. So I've, I've doubled it, so it's two by two. Let's save it, we'll come back in. You can see the amount of area it takes. Uh, you don't have to do two by two. You might want to um, not have as far left and right. Or maybe you wanna go ahead and even just take the camera itself and offset it so that the car is a little bit further back in the camera. Well, go ahead, knock yourself out. So there we go. We can see a bit more, maybe two is too much. Uh, that's fine. Now I'm not gonna worry about the Z indexing right now. If we take note here, when we drive through it, our car is under it. Well, we can do a quick fix on that. Just move the car to the bottom. But later on, we'll add Z index to some of the game starts. The car is always on top. Okay, great, we got the first one set up. Let's set another one up. And all I'm gonna do is take the first one, duplicate it, and then just move it down here. Now, this is actually gonna be my goal line or the finish line, I should say. So I'm also gonna select that. Now, the event we made in our script, I refer to those as like a local event. I don't care about anyone else hearing this. I'm not gonna emit it, I'm not gonna broadcast it. I don't want anyone else listening to it. It's just for here. 
But there is something I want to do kind of globally, and that is increase the lap counter. So for that, we need a global script. So let's go ahead and make that now. So I'm going to come up, we'll shrink down the tiles. We don't need any more assets. And I'm going to make a folder just for scripts. Now, this is a folder I put scripts in that actually aren't attached to anything. So global scripts pretty much always go in here. And of course, we'll make that new script. It's going to be of type C sharp. And I'm going to call it global. So we can just double click this to open it up inside of Visual Studio Code. And just like always, uh, we got an error on global. And it looks like I actually already have a script called global. Let me take a quick look here. Maybe I've saved one in a different spot. I'll just go up to the top here. Let's just search for global. And I do have two, one inside of scripts and the other just right in the root. So I'm gonna get rid of the root one. Get rid of the search. So it was just in root here. The only one that exists now should be right here. Hopefully that's the one I'm working on. <laughs> and it looks like it fixed itself. All right, great. So the first thing I wanna look at is private int lap counter. I'm gonna start that off equaling at zero. I also want to be able to set it up so we have a maximum amount of laps. Now I'm doing this in a global, which is available through every single scene that we make. If this is something specific you want per track. So maybe some tracks you're making, you want to have three laps, some five laps. Uh, you would make a, a level script. And I don't know how far this is going to go for this series. If we get that far, if there's enough, uh, I guess, popularity for it, we can take a look at that. But for now, I'm just going to have the one track or I'm going to set all the tracks up the same in the sense that uh, the track's design might be different, but the mechanics are the same. So int, and we'll have max laps. I'm going to set that to three. And the last thing we need to do inside of global is set up this lap counter. So I've set up a getter method, so we can actually get what the lap counter is currently at. Later on, we are going to set up a UI, and we're going to want to be able to get what the lap counter is currently at and display it, as well as the max lap counter. Well, we'll deal with that when we get to it, though. Then I need some way for them to be able to increase the lap counter. In this case, I'm just setting a set method. Every time it's called, increases the lap counter. Since we don't have a UI, we'll just print it out. So how do we access this? Well, it's a little bit different in C Sharp than it is in uh, GDScript. The first thing I'm gonna do is uh, create a variable to hold a reference to that global. And then on my onReady function, I'm going to go out and I'm gonna find the global. Now, all of the global scripts that you add are always at the, well, they're just off of the root. Now, let me set this global up because we still haven't set that up and I'll show you how that works. So we'll jump in. We're gonna come to projects, project settings, auto load. We're gonna hit this little uh, folder icon. We're gonna come into where the folder is. I put it in scripts, we'll double click it. And it's gonna recommend a name for you. And you can call it whatever you want. I'm just gonna stick with global. I'm gonna hit add and it adds it here. That's all we have to do to get it to automatically load every time the game starts. So I'm gonna close this. Uh, let's take a look at our track hierarchy, right? We have a tile map, we have a couple checkpoints in the car. When I start it, we're gonna come back in and take a look. We have this global now. So we, this is the track, here's the route, here's the global. All the track stuff is right here. So when our checkpoints, which have the script on them, have to access the global, we're just gonna start automatically from root and go to global. Later on, we're gonna be adding custom signals. It's gonna be the same thing. It's just gonna show up here and whatever we named it. So since I called it global, that's why it shows up here global. If I would have changed that name, it would have showed up different here. So remember, it's not the name of the script. It's the name you gave it inside of the auto load. So I'll stop that. Let's jump back into our code and let's change this. So we're no longer gonna to toggle just yet, but we are gonna do a couple things here. One is now we're gonna go into that global variable that we have. And I want to call it lap counter, and I can just hit plus plus. This will automatically increase it for us. I am still going to go in and set is active to equal to false. But what I want here is I want to be able to take that next checkpoint and activate it. So we need to get a reference to that. So I'm going to come up to the top here, and I'll put it right before the global. I do need it to be an export because I'm going to be setting this up inside of the inspector. I still like to keep everything private, but this time we're going to look for a node path. So we're not just grabbing a node, we're grabbing a path to a node. And I'm just gonna call this next checkpoint. So as this one gets deactivated, the next one's gonna get activated. So I'll come back down here, and now we can say get node, the node type that we want, which is of type checkpoint, and then we have to pass in the variable that we set up. So next checkpoint, and then we're gonna set up a method called activate. Let's create that method now. 
So this has to be public because we're accessing it from outside of this class. Does not return anything. And I've called it activate. Does not take any parameters. And all we want to do inside of here is just set is active equal to true. All right, so let's quickly follow the logic again. So to start off with, all of the checkpoints are set to, uh, to be turned off, so they're false. The first one will be turned on, this one right here. If we take a look, uh, I have to fix it. So active is on and is finished is on. This one we have to turn off because I copied it. Unfortunately, I copied it when it still had it turned on. So let's save that. So now when we drive through here, since this one's already turned on, we're going to turn it off. We're going to increase the lap counter and we're going to turn this one on. So we'll have to go through here. Then when he goes through here, turns this one off, turns this one on. Uh, there's no lap counter on this one because it's not going to be set to be um, to increase the lap counter. We'll fix that in just a second. I just realized I made a mistake. But that's fine. Then we'll just keep coming through and we'll, we'll keep going until the lap counter is done. And that finish line part should be right here where we're checking. If is finish line, then we want to go ahead and increase the lap counter. And just for sanity's sake, I'm moving that one up there. So there we go. If active is finished, lap counter, everything looks good. Um, we got to do max laps, right? I'm not going to go into it in this video on how to maybe just stop the lapping, but we should be able to get the lap counters to show up, at least the numbers. So let's start it up. And I've got an error. We do get the one, but we get an error. So let's find out what this is. We'll come into errors. And I did not set the next. So it's gone ahead and tried to uh, get the node, but it doesn't know what node to get. So let's take the first checkpoint here. Just to make sure I'm on the first one. I'm going to select it. And right there. So we have to assign the next checkpoint to it. And we can't do it just by dragging and dropping. If we come from Unity, I still do this a lot. What we do is we select it. And then we can click Assign. And that'll open up all of the things that are in our, our nodes over here. I'm going to select two. It's there. Now let's select two. Do the exact same thing for one. Make sure to save. Always save. Start it back up. And well, we'll see if there's another error. All right, lap one has started. So we're on our first lap. Lap counter did not go up. Lap counter should go up here. There we go. Now we don't have it set up to um, stop at lap after lap three. But essentially, when we go to start lap four, uh, we can either just kill the engines or like in Mario Kart where everyone just auto drives. But anyway, that's all I really want to do for this one is set up some sort of checkpoint system so that they, if you've got a really complex track, maybe you've got a figure eight. We don't want them just doing half of the half the track here. We want to make sure that they're doing the whole track or the track the way we want it. Now, later on, we can come through and do some sort of like visual effects, maybe make them pulse or when you go through them, uh, throw up some sparklers or fireworks or something like that. Um, that'll be later on. Right now, I just wanted to focus on the functionality. So if you are making a game where you want to make sure that they're doing the path that you want, a checkpoint system should solve that. Anyway, let me know down below what you thought of it. And uh, I guess that whole YouTube jazz thing, make sure you hit the subscribe button, give it a thumbs up. And um, I'm probably supposed to show a graph or something like that here right now. Maybe later. <laughs> Post-processing. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Gotta get time for those end credits or those end screens.